the special edition console, the true testament of love for a franchise. You get to show off your passion for a series through a kick-ass design that most people only see pictures of. The special edition console is the ultimate cross between passion and gaming. But not every limited edition console is equal. This week, I take a look at the range that special edition consoles have, from the best of the best to the ones that make you think where the line between console and toaster lie. Before we get into the video, I want you to let me know what your favorite special edition console is and why. Also, I hope you consider subscribing and liking if you like the stuff that I'm making. It really helps me out and shows me you want to see more stuff like this. And stay tuned until the end of the video where you can find out how you can win this Monster Hunter Rise Nintendo Switch. All right, now back to the video. Recently, I've been looking at special edition consoles and the history of them. I've had a love for gaming since I was a kid, and I always enjoyed the different variants that are possible with a console. Special editions like the old school Fantastic line for Nintendo 64 were awesome. See-through colors like ice blue, jungle green, or my personal favorite, gray purple. But what's the big deal you might be asking? It's just different colors, the console is the same. See, it's always a special moment getting a limited edition console. You can flex your love for a series with that kick-ass Pikachu 3DS, but with some special editions just being recolors or inferior versions, what makes a special edition console just that, special? In this week's video, I wanted to share the history of the special edition and highlight some of the best of the best and some of the oh god get out here that is an abomination and we both know that's the truth all joking aside the oldest special edition game consoles i could find weren't that special in all actuality most of them were just consoles that came with different games or controllers most of the time they were just pack-ins that you could get on your own not anything that really felt unique or changed the design Things like the NES Challenge that came with Super Mario 3, or the action set that came with the light gun in addition to the controllers, just so you could play that copy of Duck Hunt and Mario Bros that came with it. The heyday of the special edition really began when 3D graphics started to take hold, with consoles like the PlayStation, Nintendo 64, or even the Dreamcast. Initially, the closest you got to a special edition was add-ons you could get for your console. Things like the Sega CD or 32X that souped up the console, making it look like that Civic that threw a wing on the back for more horsepower. Once we hit the era of 3D graphics, we hit an era of aesthetics. No, this wasn't throwing Photoshop on everything, but rather everyone started to try and one-up one another putting out color variants and unique designs that most didn't even realize were possible at the time. Now that you've got a bit of the history, let's take a look at some of the most interesting variants on consoles. I'm going to share my thoughts on each of them while also going chronologically so you can see the progression throughout the years. I touched on it before, but special edition consoles like the Funtastic line of Nintendo 64 were amazing at the time. It made you feel as though you had a special connection with your console. You had the choice of which color you had, whether you were rocking with a fire orange or you were just feeling that ice blue. The Funtastic line gave you the ability to see just what was happening under the hood with the dope translucent designs. I'm positive that there were debates on playgrounds about these, with which color was the best. Jimmy saying how he could play games better just because it was watermelon red. Get the fuck out of here, Jimmy. This is great purple territory and you know it. PlayStation at the time was just dipping their toes in, with most people owning the original gray PS1. If you had something like the Jordan F1 PlayStation, you were hot shit. Dreamcast also wanted in on the special edition, and they were creating their own variants with everything from a Seaman translucent Dreamcast to a hot pink Hello Kitty one. 
which, might I add, came with a matching keyboard. And now that I think about it, the mechanical keyboard scene is kind of a parallel to special edition consoles, but for PC. The push to a new generation of consoles like the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox all had their fair share of different releases. You had things like the PS2, which came in every color imaginable. Things like the special edition PSX released in Japan. It wasn't just a console, but it also had a built-in DVR and DVD player. It expanded on the feature set of the console, but not without a premium price, sitting at 80,000 yen, which for my freedom dollar friends is around $720. Here I was thinking a PS5 for 500 was steep. The GameCube also had amazing special editions, from the mint green Tales of Symphonia edition, all the way to the spice orange GameCube that never released outside of Japan and Europe. Part of the appeal of a special edition console came in the fact that they were extremely tough to get. Different regions ended up with different variants, meaning if you wanted to get a hold of that red Gundam GameCube, you were going to pay a hefty fee importing it. While Sony and Nintendo branched out with their special editions, Xbox wasn't having that same kind of luck. Most of them were translucent recolors for Halo, but there were a few exceptions, being things like the Panzer Dragoon Xbox, or this 50 cent one that was given away in Australia, signed by the half dollar himself, to promote his game. You know, I wonder how that went. Oh, well, at least I can get a Hello Kitty Xbox. See, the special edition console didn't really hit their stride until we reached the seventh generation with consoles, with the release of things like the 360, PS3, and the Wii. Before that, most consoles were just different recolors or translucent versions. They were different for sure, but not the same styles you'd expect when someone says special edition nowadays. Once we hit the seventh generation though, that changed. We began to get special consoles for anything you could imagine. Crossovers with companies like Taco Bell holding giveaways for special editions. But if you had the tacos and the willpower, you too could earn this uh, Taco Bell branded 360. This was the time that special editions began to create more unique designs. There was that feeling that time and love was put into designing something that was unique. Your console wasn't just a recolor, but rather showcased your love of things like Halo 3 with a green and orange design. It gave you a console that had identity to it. See, limited edition consoles were constantly evolving. They gave character to these consoles and made them feel special. The designs created were something you can talk with your friends about when they came over for the weekly LAN. Anyone who saw you busting out that Yakuza PS3 knew you were a fan of the series. And while the era of add-ons for consoles became a thing of the past, the unique designs that were offered at the time skyrocketed. And on some special occasions, you got things like different startup sounds, with things like the Gears of War 360. And before we move on, I wanted to talk about faceplates. So the original 360 had a removable faceplate design. And although it was dropped pretty quickly, I always loved the concept. Being able to swap out that faceplate gave your console a new look, and I'd love to see the idea revisited at some point in the future. This was when consoles started to see more special editions that, that had character. They were designed thoughtfully to give you something that you can be proud to display. But home consoles were not the only ones getting the limited edition love. Handhelds are the pinnacle when it comes to limited editions. The Game Boy had so many variants you could choose that as a kid, it felt like having an identity crisis. Do I want to pick the Pikachu Game Boy or the Mario Game Boy that made me question where in the Mushroom Kingdom he got his tax and if they offer refunds? Handhelds as a whole are perfect for limited editions. Back in the day, everyone knew that your DS was special when you busted out a different color or one with a special design. PlayStation, on the other hand, decided to take the route of pumping out PSPs that had everything from Hannah Montana to God of War on them, truly showing off the wide range of people 
that they thought were playing games on the PSP. I just don't think the overlap of people ripping heads off of monsters in God of War and Hannah Montana fans was that big though. That might just be me. As times have gone on, we've seen special editions for any series under the sun. Some of my favorite special editions have been things like the Pikachu 3DS, where the cameras gave the impression that Pikachu is jumping out of the console, albeit with some poor camera placement. Or things like the anniversary consoles that PlayStations produced. Things that celebrated the legacy of the console with retro designs akin to the originals. See, gaming as a whole has grown to the point that everyone is able to find some variant to show off their favorite characters or games. When you see a special edition of a console, there's always a story behind it. Take the Animal Crossing Switch, for example. They were extremely tough to find when they first released, and those who had them were able to show off their love of Animal Crossing as well as their hatred for the loan shark that is Nook. But that difficulty finding these consoles is the problem with them. Over the years, we've seen more scalpers taking the market and forcing those who truly want these special editions to pay hefty prices. Scalping is a problem for a ton of hobbies, but gaming especially has seen a rampant growth in price gouging, from scalpers jacking the price higher than GameStop stock to things like Amiibos, where you have to sell your kidneys just to get a chance at that golden Mario. Scalpers are taking that excitement for a release and have been capitalizing on it, using it as an opportunity to make a quick buck. I mean, it's not like you can get your hands on something like a Monster Hunter Rise Switch unless you had a pre-order for one ahead of time. That is, until now. With the excitement and release of Monster Hunter Rise on the Nintendo Switch, I was able to get my hands on the special edition console. And as much as I love Monster Hunter, having bought a special edition 3DS when 4U came out, I wanted to give back to all of you, those who have been supporting me and the things that I've been making. I'm running a giveaway on this Monster Hunter Switch. This thing is an amazing example on how to do a special edition right. The Switch doesn't just change the console's color, but pays close attention to the small details that any fan of the series will appreciate. The dock has a Magnamalo on it, this game's flagship monster. And if docked isn't your way to play, don't worry, you're still able to show off your love for Monster Hunter in handheld with a special design on both the backplate of the Switch and the Joy-Cons. Also, before I forget, it comes with a copy of the game, unlike a lot of limited edition consoles nowadays. Now, how do you enter for your chance to win this? You might be asking. And it's simple. Down below, I've left a link for the giveaway I'm holding. All you have to do is follow the steps on that link to get entries into it before it ends on April 19th. The more you do, the more chances you have to win. That's it. Just follow the link and you'll have your own chance to win this killer switch. And just for clarification, this giveaway is only for US, Canada, and Mexico. Sorry, my international friends, but shipping is expensive. I'm extremely excited to be able to give something like this back to the community. I'm legitimately jealous of whoever wins this thing because it's that dope. And don't forget to share this video with anyone you know who might be interested in Monster Hunter or anyone who is looking to get a hold of a Switch. Thank you all again for your continuous support. And make sure to keep an eye out on here and my buddies from All Good. You might get lucky and find a secret code that will snag you some more entries into the giveaway. And with that, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good one. Peace.